Um, shall we start? Sure. I think we shall. All right. Here we are. With a with a recap. Boo! A, a, a spooky recap. Merry Christmas, everyone! Oh, oh wait. Yay! <laughs> we are in the Christmas season. <laughs> Uh, what does it look like all my, all my local shops? Last... <laughs> <laughs> Small dragons flying around with, like, you know, Christmas hats and fake beards. Um, Last time, what happened last time? Well, we decided to strike up horrible deals with the druid ghost guy. Uh, and he said, I can create a winter storm for you, but you need to kill the spirits of the land first. And we said, sure. So we went to the... Um, uh, to the water cave in the Moon Clan and murdered the water spirit and almost drowned. Uh, that was a very tough fight, actually. Uh, but we made it out uh, by the skin of our teeth. Uh, and um, yeah, the water spirit is dead. And we basically gave all the power to Rakayax, who's going to set himself up as some sort of shaman god thing. And I'm sure he's going to be great at that. I'm waiting to hear like the how that went. Uh, after that. We debated back and forth if we're gonna kill the spirit of the hordes of orcs, and with I think we're gonna, because white guy said that yeah we need to we need to take all of that down. Uh, so that's basically where we're going now. I don't remember. Did we do anything very other special than the big spirit fight? You had an encounter with the wyverns. Mm -hmm. the, right, you're right. We had a, an arena fight with uh, with um, uh, uh, beast slayer. Um, Fokrun Beastbane. Fokrun Beastbane, yes. Fokrun Beastbane. And we uh, defeated his uh, children uh, and was a very happy Vyvern who gave Rakaix presents um, that he didn't like. And we thought it might be a romance going on there, but alas. Um, but we won, uh, so the Vyverns are with us. Uh, they're going to show up here and there's going to be some training, so that's great. We have the air cavalry fixed. We ha we did also send Moonseer out to, uh, to die. Um... Moonseer. Moonseer? Isn't that his name? Hide. Moonhide. Moonhide. Which is a kindly old fireworks maker. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's plot twist. It was Moonseer we sent to die. <laughs> I'm just trying to help. Oh, God. They were uh, screwed. <laughs> we <laughs> killed him. <laughs> Moonseer must live. Um, it's just such a professional recap. And, and so he's dead, probably. Which is too bad, because we all liked him very, very much. But again, Rakaix has ensured us, he has sworn blood oaths to us on his eternal soul that he can manage this without him. No, in retrospect, um, I could probably have convinced him. Yeah, probably. Everything considered. That, that's that's what I thought as well, but ah, there we go. Okay. We can also resurrect him, right? As an angry ghost or something. Yeah, hopefully. Oh. Um... Yeah, so we're set up. We have the storm fixed. We have the vibrance fixed, and I think we have the ballista fixed, almost. Which means that we Not have quite. we have basically completed all three objectives. And honestly, I'm not <laughs> exactly sure what we're going to do now. Well, we were um, going to go to the temple, right? Ballista is still tentative. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, we were like, you were like, we should join the big gold dragon. He seems legit. I was like, let us at least go to his like secret temple and like check out what what secrets he has there first. Mm-hmm. Find out know why he's evil and corrupt. Sure, that's that's perfect. I I want to go to a temple. Yeah, you wanted to live in the sand temple anyway, right? Oh, I do like to live in a you sand temple. Should find the gold dragon dad's sand temple and like loot it and desecrate it, make the gold dragon bones into a big skeletal gold dragon, and uh, mm -hmm. have have happy days. You know, I I like the sound of this. Then ride it up. Uh, yes, we, we, we crash yeah, we his party, his midsummer party. is like, hey, welcome everyone to Fight the party. The and uh, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't land. Like, your father says hello, golden one. It's just this skeletal remain shambling in. And he's like, my son. <laughs> it's like, father. Oh, that'd be great. We need to do that now. You always disappoint. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, got, he's, that, no, he's that old no. zombie guy from the graveyard in Baldur's Gate 2. <laughs> <laughs> it's Uncle Fester. Oh no, Lester? Lester, Uncle Bad. Lester. Anyway, he was Wait, great. Atlas. Doc, you were saying something? Oh yeah, the Oryx spirit is still They're alive. Unfortunately, Mountain is correct. Unfortunately, is not sorted yet. For one, no, we need a moment, because the person yeah. we sent out to go... 
Yes, the aura sphere is still alive, and the ballista is not sorted yet because with the ballista, um, the person we said to go uh, investigate it was Moonhide. Oh wait. I concern Subtina. She is skilled yes. enough to um, to negotiate. I have I, I have already taken the liberty of finding the price of ballista. What? Oh. All right. You? Because during the downtime, I've only explained the Camarga. Is the child form? Yes, that's a <laughs> child form. Don't make him want to bite you. You're smaller than him now. The guy. Uh -huh. Yeah. On that note, why don't we? Why don't you guys tell the others what the others might have seen you do during the week that we had off screen? Well, a kayak has certainly been around uh, the camp pretty much all the time. He's been speaking in Shwanti. I don't know how many of you understand that, no. if any. To to the locals, and he has communed with them, and then brought some into the temple cave, and walked around, and, and simply socialized a whole damn lot. Uh, pro you probably stopped paying attention at some point, because he's just been, well, talking a lot, and doing magical demonstrations, and, and speaking about all sorts of shamanistic water things. And uh, it's it's been uh, long-winded. So to speak. Okay. Uh, he hasn't really left this place a whole lot, but he's been he's been working hard to do things. Does he, uh, if if Tiraxus asks, does he say that he still has the clan under control? As much as before, slowly getting more. Uh, I haven't a complete like return on my things yet. Okay. Uh, so okay. We, as we assume that everything went yeah, well. Like after this session, mm. like time. Oh, Rashex would certainly <laughs> think that. Uh, he has certainly managed to attract quite a bit of attention with his theatrics and demonstrations. And quite positive attention at that, as the rumors that have slowly been going through the camp of his rather unusual and powerful powers, mostly being connected to the element of water, by far the most useful element in the desert, have certainly caught most of the clan's attention. Many have decided to follow Rajax in that way, follow as in try to see what he's all about. And many have, after watching Rajax do his thing, decided that, yeah, he, he's probably a spirit. I mean, what else could he be? Just a dragon? No, no, he's much more. Yes, much more than a dragon. And so the fact that the clans main spirit has disappeared, hasn't really been noticed by anyone. Anyone who could notice it has been taken care of, and even those shamans that have decided to follow Rajax instead of essentially doing nothing because their position did not allow them to be in any of the more important clan jobs, they don't have the power to notice that there's something going on. For all intents and purposes, Rajax is the only thing worth worshipping, at least in this camp. He's very charismatic. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Not worshipping us, eh? It is, however, <laughs> worth mentioning that, that the people who you would consider the leaders of these people still are quite entrenched in their leadership positions. And they while certainly respecting you for the things that you have done, aren't too entranced by Fiatrix. Sure. sure. I mean, they don't need to be yet. Look at this old guy. Yeah. yeah. Like never, 10, bro. Ne never not enough of that guy. Who am I? Let me tell you. Tradition. I am so old. I am great fighter. In my younger days, I was... Oh. Uh, you know, when, when we've dealt with Sunta, there might be a bit of a rearrangement of things, but for now, it you know, Rakax doesn't really need to do the, like, decide who goes to do the dishes. People can do that. Right now, he's just loving the attention. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good to be a spirit dragon. And I mean, who is to say he isn't? I'm shrugging. I'm like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't burst a bubble. <laughs> well, 
what did, did, did the others do in the downtime then? Or rather, what could the others have seen you do during the downtime? Well, easy enough. Short amount of time, time around here. Then oh, God. Flying with just this. No, known to you this time, not just flying off without telling anybody. Hmm? Thank up. Hello? Hello? Hey, you're cutting out slightly. Try again. Well, he would have he would have made this uh, knowledge to all of you, obviously because someone may have asked him to buy something for them. Flew off to Kermarga to buy um, or to buy and also find out the value of Mithril. What is Came it? back and had a pair of Mithril claws also made for him. Kadok oh, yeah. has indeed set up a proper smithy in the in the mountainside. A big thing that really looks out of place. Big furnace that he uses to make your things for you. Especially during the night he likes to work on the smithy because it's slightly colder. However, much to the dismay of everyone in the camp because hammering metal in the night is quite loud. Continue. Yeah, unless you went to Caramel, you wouldn't know what else he did. So, so what is the price? What? How much money? Like, do does the tribe have enough money for the ballista, the five ballista? I don't know. One. I don't. One. Okay, so it's five ballista we need. I think so. Okay. I don't. I don't remember how many we needed. I think that's what he asked for. We like three See? bolts of mithril. See, how how many did he ask for? Yeah, uh, the general asked. Or, or rather suggested that that would be the minimum, saying that he would like to have five ballista with 50 bolts each. Yeah, so a ballista and 50, and 50 mithril bolts would be a thousand, would be a thousand gold each. So basically he needs 5,000 golds worth of stuff. Yes. All right. How is the clan's covers? Uh, the clan's covers, which were located in the in the deep in the caves in one of the side caves, which Rajayx would now have control over, mm -hmm. aren't quite close to five thousand. You would guess that the collected potential tribute for the Watcher would run up to two thousand gold pieces, but not five thousand. Huh. Time to sell some slaves then. <laughs> That's what the uh, uh, Inquisitor did, and well, we took what he had, and he didn't have a lot of money. Someone could front it, uh, certainly. If if you have money left. No. I have three thousand. Not really. Well, let's see here. How much money do we need? Five thousand. And we had two thousand. Mm -hmm. I so need someone to front like three thousand, then they get paid back as soon as we get treasure. I have three thousand. I I mean I could I could ship in. I don't have three thousand, but I could ship in if I, I don't mind that I just And I'll just confront the money. Yeah. Then I'll add it here that Okay. I'll remove it then. Bam. Do you remember that uh I've written it down in the loot document. The first three thousand gold of stuff we get is yours. Okay, so I'm not... Because not we all paid for it, right? Okay, then I'm not going to write it in my document. Sure. So, um... That was a thing. That was a thing. <laughs> now we have enough for the ballista. Yay! But now we have to just send someone out to transport it because I, it's not as easy to carry five ballista back. Septina available? Septina would now be available, yes. It was who was suggested by Moonlight himself. I, uh, I trust her. She is a skilled manipulator and a negotiator. I already miss Moonide. We need her to, uh, to negotiate the ballistas and bolts. There's also this very interesting story I heard in Camargo. Oh. oh, do tell. A big bronze dragon apparently visited a short time ago, buying huge amounts of lumber, rope, canvas and tools. 
-hmm. Lumber, rope, and canvas. And tools. Like trebuchets? I'm not entirely sure. No, no, no. The people who want to build... he'll buy it, but he just basically bought it now. You don't build trebuchets with canvas, do you? Well, maybe you do. The main point I, is he basically bought. He basically bought at the market's worth of that stuff for a day. Maybe I was thinking maybe, he wanted to just Skull Clan smash. Maybe, maybe it's for the party tents, you know. Oh, that could be, but that's in like three months, though. Yeah, well, you know, it's a lot of things you need to. Maybe it's the one we found dead in the desert. He didn't have that much of kind of crap. Maybe got stolen. Wood and canvas. Someone stole all the wood. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of wood. Someone was playing that game. Shelter. Well, it's interesting news, but Septina can see if you can find out more about any dragon things, and then we can go and look for the. Uh, I think the like the the diary. Uh, wait, sorry, I'm cutting people off. We should do that after people have said what we saw. Sorry. So. Oh, what we've been doing. Uh, I know it's been pretty. It's pretty simple. She's been uh, reading and training. That's really all. And she did ask a favor for, from Avalnix. So she now has a very pretty mithril tail. And Chili? Did you just call Terexus Tilly? Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> I'm not gonna, a player, you know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna you acknowledge what? Tilly as. Yeah, you what? You fucking what? <laughs> bait, bait, back it up. Uh. Tilly. Okay. <sighs> why, why Tilly? I don't know why it's Tilly. It's like Till, and then with an L I on. <laughs> Rye, whatever you. Oh. Caxi. <laughs> Yeah. Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> hey, Rachel. Listen, Alice. Herbert. Oh, Herbert. <laughs> uh, well, Tilraxos left and uh, he seemed to have talked uh, some with Septina and then he flew away. Uh, he flew down south and you don't exactly know where he went. But he will come back at the end of the week. Basically having a slight report of... Uh, of the affairs back home because he, he went home to check up on kobolds and stuff uh, and he will tell you all that while he visited Skrivix was all, all all besides himself with ecstaticness because it seems that the eggs have hatched oh. and so the caves are now teeming with teeny tiny little forest kobolds oh running around oh my god I missed it uh, yeah it was it was really everyone rolled around I was super happy and uh, and they don't do any useful work still because they're kind of <laughs> small, but they're sort of transporting pebbles back and forth and they seem to be very happy with that. That's so cute! Yes. Uh, he has also uh, taken the, uh, the, um, uh, the initiative of widening the tunnels, uh, for which T-Rex uh, is, you know, nodded in, in, in approval for. Um, but then he said something that really freaked me out. He said the following, and I quote, I would never imply anything that could offend the masters, but isn't your size unusual? You of course know better than I, but for your kind, age is size and size is age. If you grow this quickly, what will that mean for your glorious future? Frankly, I'm worried. He totally meta-commented on our fast growing. Well, it's a it's an in universe fact. We are growing much quicker than I, I, I thought. We had sort of agreed to ignore that. No, no, we are not. Okay, I'm freaking out then. Because well, you thought you said that we don't just grow big one day of the other. Well, yeah, but like I, Rakaix is almost the same size as you, but not quite. Right, and you're just at the beginning of being large. Because we okay, so we are we are okay, so we are incredibly special dragons. Because yeah. we, we grow not with age, but Something with experience. Something about us is special. Hmm. hmm. And we might be aging quickly. Like, we, our, our powers oh. might be drained out of us quickly. Our life force. It's, it's like a Benjamin... Like it's that. like a Benjamin uh, Button thing, but... I someone casted, like, a... Like, a... Look like at like that aging spell. Mm -hmm. you know Curse of the Ages. 
It's that not is, a thing that usually happens. We've, is, I think we've had subtle comments on it before. That is why I asked Sheep how long it's been since we've got released, and it's only been some, um, some months. And I'm still, I know it's still six years old. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of freaking out. So, so he said that uh, Pilot's Tower. Uh, it's been some activity. The the uh, <laughs> Mercs uh, have created a jolly and anarchic bustle of freelancers. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I arrived, they sort of freaked out because oh god, a dragon arrived suddenly. <laughs> we thought he, they were gone. <laughs> uh, but then they sort of you know bowed and scraped, and they offered up 500 gold pieces in coins oh. and silken trinkets. So I guess I'll put that on the pile. Well, I guess we can give it to Inabox then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's just wait until there is 3,000 so Alright, if that's what you want to do, that's, that's what we'll do. That's a lot easier for me, at least. Um, I also have ordered my people in Appkin to start opening Appkin up and start creating a uh, sort of a, a corporation between them and the Mercs at the tower because uh, there's still bandits around and they can help uh, clear out the bandits and security countryside. How so is the Boneflower doing? Well, uh, I don't have anything in my notes here. If Jirax has uh, peeked it, inside... It's certainly still there, where mm. it was put by Rotex. It hasn't seen it any has, action? It hasn't seen any action. Okay. That's good. Maybe one cobalt walked in there and I then, consider like... having it, like, leave soon then. Mm -hmm. It can climb, so it can, like... like I imagine, like, it shoot its long arms up at the, like, wall and, like, drag its way up like that. That's how it moves, like, on those long tendrils, shooting into the ground. Well, that's the basic things to Rotex will uh, will report back to you, at least. Mm -hmm. All right, well, good to know. Good to know. Good work. You should have told me. I want to come and see the couple <laughs> babies. I wasn't sure what you were doing. I'm sure there'll be more weeks where you can go see couple babies. True. They don't grow up, grow up as fast as we do. No, they don't. I'm sure. All right, then. It is then one week after we've last met in person in session. It would then be the 22nd of the rest, with plenty of time still till the summer festival that all of you, of course, immediately want to attend because it sounds so great and I, nothing that can go wrong I'm there. I'm totally coming to that festival. Nope, nope, no, 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 not even close to it. The Valley of the Scrolls used to be a hidden valley, but now it has exploded in size rather rapidly as all the different clan members, upon your request, have joined their forces there, talking between each other and just being ready for whatever they are being told to do. The General's men have arrived in the week of downtime, with the General, of course. They have made their camp slightly, uh, slightly further away, not exactly distancing themselves, but clearly telling everyone that they aren't quite sure yet what the hell is going on. Have the Wyverns arrived? The Wyverns have been trickling in, causing a significant amount of initial panic. Okay. As Around. there was one Wyvern, then two, then four, then eight, just sitting on the mountainside looking down. But they, of course... Out. Sorry, what? These are coming in powers of two here. It almost seems that way, as there's quite a few. After the, the week, you would have seen about three dozen Wyverns, plus Fokron having arrived, making the camp a rather noisy affair with their shrieks and roars, and, well, high pitched roars, really, and avid requests for food which has, mm -hmm. of course, prompted the, the Moon Clan to move the Aurochs closer so they can actually satisfy the Wyverns and shut them up somehow. Yeah, if dragons come now to take the Aurochs, we have give flying cavalry. Maybe that shut up the general so much well. <laughs> he certainly seems impressed that you are not just empty words. Not that he would have ever implied such a thing, but seeing <laughs> yeah, the be actual results... Very careful how you, how you state that, <laughs> General, because... I'm not have, saying that you can't do anything. <laughs> but we are we're kind of grown up now a little bit, and... Uh, yeah. 
the training of the Wyverns hasn't quite yet begun as they still kind of need to be well fed to the point where they don't try to eat everyone but it's slowly getting there and the general is quite confident that these will do mm -hmm. it is then a week later what would you want to do well we had the notebook uh, the magical magical notebook laptop yes. phone <laughs> that that we would like I, I think it's had had like location for how to find the gold dragon secret temple yeah uh, it did not have a location it merely had the statement that if the author of the book would put his mind to it he would be fairly confident that he can find it well you know we are smart people as it happens we need uh, how how much information is in it in this like about it for kind of like reads about this temple? Uh, the journal would contain information that the temple was most definitely uh, west of Kermaga, somewhere at the edge of the rise. Mm -hmm. It used to be on top of it. However, something has caused it to essentially disappear into the ground. But what about it, like? Uh, it is a temple dedicated to a gold dragon called... Let me check my notes. I should have had those open like an hour ago. That's not it. It is a temple dedicated to the gold dragon called Oronostics who was, or is apparently, the grandfather of Orestrix, who had many, many titles, among them advisor of kings and emperors, who is known to have been respected by all and loved by many. Many important people have visited this temple to gain the access to it, uh, the dragon's cryptic suggestions which were plenty of reasons for many people to offer him wagons and wagons full of valuables, even though at first glance the things that he said weren't immediately helpful. However, at least legend says that whatever he said did in fact ensure that a kingdom, a, a country, a family managed to endure some terrible crisis. Could find out more information, guys, but it's gonna take a long time potentially. I have access to legend lore, um, but this sounds I, like it doesn't really sound like I have detailed information about the thing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I think that the first thing we should do is to go and have a quick talk with the uh, white druid ghost guy and see what he, he might know he might know he's super ancient uh he has weird knowledge of the land who knows what strange knowledge he has picked up um also, since Sheep is posting that text to us, I am now inclined to believe that there is some sort of like silly copper dragon like limerick or something hidden in there that would point us in the right direction. But <laughs> but white white dragon dude might know. He might also actually inform us uh, more specifically about that uh, that Oroch spirit and if we really really need to kill it. Since you mm -hmm. seem so reluctant to do so, but without well, if nothing else, we can do it like in two months. When, when, like, for now, I think keeping the orcs healthy and, and all is great. If that works for him, that's fine for There's me. There's no real haste. Like, as long as it's done, like, at the time when we need the spell, which is slightly after the harvest, like, festival. Yes, workers. <laughs> So, um, we could go visit him. Maybe he could give us detailed information about it that would cut it down from 2d6 weeks to 1d10 days, which is a little more manageable. Mm -hmm. It's spent a lot of time, like 12 weeks, huh? Okay, we guys need to cast a spell for like 
three months. That's a long time to cancel. Now the summer stuff. festival's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not. That's not great. If we're there, though, it only takes one d four times ten minutes to know everything about it. So, you know. So if we could find the location of it, that would be just great. All right, let's go and talk to him. Uh-huh. All right, your trip there would, as before, take slightly over a day, meaning that you would arrive the morning of the 24th, essentially. And just for effect, I will move you over there again. <laughs> The proper map. Do you take Avenger as well? Yep. Alright. She is gonna see everything. Oh. You make your way under the the instructions, the directions of Avolnix and Einavox, who know the way exactly to this lone and forsaken place in the desert, and you arrive at the enormous skull of what you at least have been told is the skull of the first white dragon. That said, I think this is the most well-traveled skull in the entire desert. There aren't that many competitors, no, I think. No. And such prestigious visitors. Mm-hmm. Like the like the not-too-warm, not-too-cold zone. Mm-hmm. That's the best zone. Uh. The cold really, the the cold really comes in waves, like a enormous creature breathing. We, uh, I guess, we knock or like ring the bell or. There, there is no bell. I can't hello, really, hello. I can't really go down there anymore. I'm too big. You, you would fit. Mm. Squeezing through the gun. No, I, as I said, I can't go down there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Aerolix. What do why he's looking at us? Why, why is he looking over there? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's behind you. <laughs> don't turn around. <laughs> exactly. Don't, look. don't turn around. Just look don't at me. Blink. Exactly. Don't blink. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like a mouse. <laughs> My jack, my dragon, dragon chair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jack says, "Pokes ironic with his tail." Are you muted, DDS? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just. Has looked at this as the surly Arvonlex making his way down. Arvonlex. I mean, I mean, I don't really like the idea of going down alone because, like, just saying here, like, you guys are the ones with the actual questions about this temple thing. Uh, I'll yeah, go with that's you. That's true. Rakai, okay, screw you. Go down there. Nope. Nope. And I sit on you. That's very rude. I have spikes all over my body, so. That is true. Be aware of that. You go down into the gullet, into the comfortable cold for Avonix, into the oppressing cold for attacks, and eventually enter the big chamber some some distance down the tunnel. And, as always, really, you find the old man studying some of the wall, some part of the wall of the cabin, not really noticing your approach, his left, a- left hand stroking his, his chin, the right hand, well, the great arm missing, of course. As you're there, peace there. Uh, hello. He turns around towards you. Ah, hello. Visitors again. I'm not used to being so popular. Well, you have interesting things to say, I would say. You know a lot. That is very appreciated by one such as us. Have you felt a change in the spirits of the place? Weakening. Ever so slightly, perhaps. Yes. Did you 
we have destroyed one of the greatest spirits of the area. Which one? The water spirit. He suddenly... The cave of the scrolls. Throw me a sense motive. Well then, that is good. Did you have you have any plans to kill any further spirits? I do not think that we have, but perhaps you would know more of them. I have tried to find more potential targets for you, and I do believe that I have one idea that might help you rather significantly. However, I'm still working on the details there. If you could kill the spirit of the Aurochs, I think I could get you your storm. However, I can give you something better if you did more for me. How so? What exactly see, would be better than a storm? Well, a storm is just that, a mindless thing that does what a storm does. It will impede you as much as your enemies, and while it would not appear any of our kind, he looks towards Evonix, it would still mean that it would even the odds, perhaps, but not give you the advantage. You could that give us could an be... intelligence storm? In a way, yes. You see, the Cinderlands are home to many a storm. And there is one very special, that is, one very special, one very special storm that is only home to the Cinderlands. And as the natives do say that every stone is a totem, every object is a spirit, that storm too, I believe, is perhaps not sentient, but certainly far more than, it, than what it appears to be. Think of an ember storm as a living, breathing thing, a thing that lusts for destruction. Not very useful, usually, but it is still significantly smarter than a force of nature. As I've said, I'm still working on the details, but it does sound rather intriguing, doesn't it? It does, it does, yes. A storm that would only impede our enemies. It wouldn't be enough to simply kill spirits for it, however. You would have to create a new one. That sounds very interesting. Or corrupt an existing one, I suppose, which might also be Also sounds very interesting. Those details I would like you to keep working on. Really. Oh, I will, of course. Beyond that, we also came for another reason. And There's which the question about a temple that once was at the edge of the Cinderlands. I've heard of it, yes. Gold Dragon. Would you happen to know where it, where it has been located? It has apparently sunk it into the ground, and we can't really find it easily. Any pointers would be appreciated. It is known to be lost, yes. I do not know why it it's received. sunk. I have not seen it myself. I neither do I know its location. It has sunk into the ground long before my time. Many, many centuries ago. I am afraid I cannot help you if you are indeed trying to find this temple. I see. Well, that is unfortunate. Perhaps, given some time, I could find information for you. However, I am rather busy with many things. We will see what we can do on our own. Well, not to the end. I will not disturb you any longer. Oh. He smiles. Ronix will simply roll his eyes a little, following him out. Oh, cold. He didn't know anything. He is, however, researching how we can create an intelligent ember storm that might be able to help us while, well, damaging our enemies in battle. 
there wasn't the idea of summoning a winter storm that which would stop the uh, debilitated red. An ember storm doesn't seem to do that very much. I suppose we could make it an intelligent winter storm just as well. Just a ambitious project. He has not figured out the details. He did not know about any about the, he knew about the temple's existence, but not anything about where it would be. Perhaps Piley could have had an idea, but he seemed to simply be brute forcing it. Lady Ashwood, perhaps? Well, it's, um... From what we know of it, it was on the Stormwell Rise, which means that it was actually on the edge, like literally on the edge. It has a big stairwell mm, leading down, like into the lands below. It was a really big thing. But then it was um, all eaten up by the rise. Mm -hmm. Just poop into it. Well, it uh, sunk into it, whatever that means. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I would imagine that that would leave a lot of, like, geolo geological, like, movements or something. Like, the earth is, like, do we have an area of the small rise that are, like, famed for disturbances or earthquakes or something like that? Roll me knowledge geography. All right, finally. No. Nope. <laughs> no, not, not even. Oh. <laughs> Derp. No, the earthquake is when no. the earth burps. Since, uh, since she hasn't really got the chance. Maybe, maybe a vendor would know. I mean, maybe her dad once said a thing or two. About a thing or two. What a vendor? I mean, my point is that I it should leave a mark. Like if some, some a huge temple sinks into the ground at the edge, it should leave a lot of destruction and stuff behind, mm -hmm. potentially. And even if it was long ago, it shouldn't be impossible to spot an area where, like, obviously there's been a lot of crumblings and destruction. Again, if if we could have enough information to, to have information counting as details on it. And enough, with enough details known about it, it would only take me a matter of about a week to figure out more specific things and then like an hour to figure out pretty much all specific things. Yeah, I don't really know who would have... Well, any details we can scrap together, I suppose. The only thing I can, the only thing I can think of is there are certain areas of Stormwell Rise that probably isn't near because of um, the fact that the dwarves were excavating it. Mm -hmm. well, I think they might they be excavating it because of it. That's what I'm thinking. That the dwarves were actually there to excavate for the temple. They were looking for it, yeah. But but they were also looking outside yes, the ash. Really haven't found it yet. Which is like looking for your keys under the lamppost because they're tight. Right? Maybe we can go because the dwarves were hired by Piley, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe we can, can we go through some of his old notes. See if he had any theories or any like thoughts on the matter. We could take a swing back there to the tower. How my, long is how long is that traveling? My other, uh, my only other option would be to speak to like the oldest guy we have in the in the clan. See if he remembers something, or but read it's all like, the. It's like an an eight, like an old gold dragon's grandfather. Mm -hmm. That's very old. Mm -hmm. like, like that is like like three generations of gold dragons. Oh, maybe old guys like I remember That's my like father's thousands. father. You used to tell me a story about blah 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 blah. We had a knowledge spirit. <laughs> Only we had a knowledge spirit in a skull. Uh, we could we could uh, talk to and he could be like, quippy and yeah, we can see the dark on knowledge and get all creepy on us. A spy on us in a bath. And demand romance novels. What? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. 
Makes well, sense. Well, we have Fifty Shades of Dragon, so... That's one. That's worth a read or two. <laughs> the trade uh, parts of Tobacco's true name to a devil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that seems like a good idea, right? <laughs> mm, uh, I do like that demon, though, he summons. It's so polite. Mm. Um... Because looking at the other places we have discovered, all of these are people that are either dead or in the camp at the moment. Um, I doubt the orcs would know anything in Urglin, and I doubt there is anyone in Karamaga who knows anything. Because if anyone had known in those places, they would have gone and got them grabbed all the gold. Right, right. This, this seems to be a dragon secret, right? Yeah. yeah Equally equally the fact that yeah, the Dwarven city seems to be searching for it, but they clearly have not found it, or else otherwise they wouldn't be searching anymore. But they don't have the same amount of access to the Ashwood as we do. The they did say it was right at the edge of the Ashwood, right? It led down to the where the Ashwood... Well, it says it le leads down to where the Ashwood now is, mm. which means it's really fucking old. Mm. It's older than the forest itself. Yes. Is like pre. Uh, but that month. means it is. If you look at the map, it is. It is this area, somewhere along this area. Yeah. Which certainly narrows it down. It's like half of the rise, at least, ruled out. Mm -hmm. If only I was a ranger dragon, <laughs> I could track, or like read sure. the land, or. Fly along the edge of the stole rise, locating objects mm -hmm. for like a few hours a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would be slow, but you know, I'd find a lot of. I'm searching for money or gold. I found any one of us had taken the uh, dragon like uh, gold sniffer feet. We also don't know how deep down it is. No. No, we don't. No, we don't. Well, I guess Lady Ashwood might know. The thing is, she's incredibly uninterested in anything that is just outside her forest. Well, Isn't she sleeping too? No, that that was before. It's like being to be spring now. Have we officially moved into spring, Ship? Yes. Okay. She, she's waking up and being like, <laughs> What? <laughs> if you've got a scroll of find the path. And we'd have about 10 minutes to find it. Mm, mm. I would need to move really quickly. Yeah. But so we would get a sense in the direction at least. Yeah. Isn't that like a thing as well? No direction. Mm hmm. Get those wanderer's boots. Magic dragon. Really? I just need to know. Oh. No direction just tells you in which direction you're facing. Oh. That's like not really. North. Oh, yeah, thanks. basically. Thanks. Oh, you must go north. Yeah. Must travel west to the ancient lands of Kalimdor. I uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the clan, uh, someone in the clan might have have some legend or something. But I, uh, other than that, we just need to put our mind to it. So does that mean we need to headbutt the book? I would like to start headbutting the book. I'll tell you what to stop. <laughs> <laughs> he smashes his head repeatedly into the book. Uh, you know where it is? Yeah. No location would be doing, but that's like an ace level thing. Mm -hmm. No access to any of that. Nope. Well, let's go back to the uh, to the uh, to the clan and see if anyone knows anything. Yeah. We can go and ask him, at least. That's basically what we did here. Yeah, doesn't cost anything. We go back. 
You go back. What puts you to the dawn of the 26th of the rest? You return to the camp. Not much has changed in your absence of a couple days. The training with the Wyvern seems to have almost begun, but most of the people are still hesitant to approach them at all. Well, sure, they have like a couple of months. It'll be normalized at the time when we actually need them to fight on them. Who is the most knowledgeable and well versed in ancient legends and lore? I think it would be Tanrov. Is it Tanrov? Uh, it's probably Tanrov. I mean, look, the look Smith, probably not. Uh, the Flame Tails, probably not. The Gero, no. probably not. And not probably not the Beast Wranglers either. No. Might have been like Moon Man, but. Uh, Moonman is dead. It's a shame. Yeah, it's a shame. Did 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 White Dragon, if we asked him, so sort of offhandedly confirm that that was a thing? Uh, that who was a thing? Did did the White Dragon? Oh, uh, he will say that he has taken care of your troubles. Hmm. Oh, alas. <sighs> And as far as oldest person in the camp goes, Tenroth is the sole contester. So I've asked, what would he think about the temple? Where is it? Tell us a sky story. coordinate. Well, he will furrow his brows in concentration, looking up towards the sky, and come up with nothing. Like it is to the south of here. <laughs> Are you making this up, old man? Yes. There are stories in the Shut caves. <laughs> no, what? But none that imply a location. A place of pure knowledge and direction, yes. But whoever wrote those scrolls might not have considered it necessary to also include directions. It is a place that back then was widely known until... Whatever happened to it happened. Well, I guess I'm off to read those scrolls. I suppose you are. Yep. I read their language. It's only natural. Hmm. So she what right. would the scrolls say? Uh roll me a knowledge history with a plus two bonus. Okay. Why can't I reach Shanti, what is the name of it? I have knowledge history. Maybe if uh, a reads aloud, you know. Story time with mm -hmm. with water spirit. <laughs> yeah, you put down on the glasses and. Well, these scrolls do in some parts mention of the pilgrimage of some of the Moon Clan's leaders south towards the Stover Rise to a, a place of guidance. That isn't really described in detail, but it is very clear from the scrolls that whoever went south inevitably saw the place from a huge distance away, as it, is, as it was rather, well, both large and obvious. Mm. Something about yellow marble, a, a yellow marble pyramid or almost. That's really not helpful. Back when there was a barren valley where the Ashwood now is. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's it is too vague. 
and uh, we have no one really to go with. The only other option is Lady Ashwood, I suppose. If we want to try to deal with her again. Yeah. Or we'll go through party's notes. Can, can't uh, Rakhayek read up for Einavax since she can get some info out of it? If you translate for Einavax. Sure. Uh, since you're essentially reading the same things, and Einavox can't do any research of her own, I, I don't think I, that would be appropriate. What if I put tongues in her? If she had a way to, for a decent amount of time, read the language, then that would certainly be a possibility. So how long Let's I can, do it. How long I can do it. It's hours on tongues, I think. I think it might be 10 minutes, 10 minutes per level. Which is about an hour per casting, an hour and a half per casting, and I can do it like six times or so. Yeah, that, that's enough. That's enough. Seven times. Well, let's study. Uh, Einowak certainly finds mentions that Rotex might have missed or simply disregarded as unimportant. That would imply that you could both see the mountains and the city of Kermaga from the temple. Something that would imply that it is not really close to either, but rather somewhere in the middle. So smack dab in the middle. Okay. Perhaps even slightly closer to the city than the mountains, because of course mountains are far larger than a city, so that so would make think. sense. That would be a plausible location. That's very close to our cobalt. Oh. Well, the dwarves were excavating in the area, so it makes sense. Did it's the cobalt cool. say anything about a dragon temple they fled from? They, I don't think they fled from the dragon Shrex. temple. The cobalt's Grivix will tell you fled from the dwarves who were excavating. We lived in the dragon temple. <laughs> you see <laughs> money. The Grivix, <laughs> you complete buffoon! There was there was piles and piles was of gold. So much gold. Yeah. You are small dragons compared to the full sized gold dragons with emerald eyes. They were worth billions, Mom said. <laughs> You're like <"Urgh." laughs> Do <you> want <laughs> But now sadly they are gone. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Don't I took them all. We uh, we spent all the money to get the mining picks. It was quite expensive in Karmaga, but you know, they gave us a fair price. Mm, you said so. So. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have masterwork mining picks. <laughs> no, not uh, quite. Anyway, uh, let's go there and idly begin looking around. Mm. <laughs> you know. I know. How about it? How about it? Yeah, then Cobble Dragon can figure it out, we can figure it out. Yeah, that asshole. Away! Away! Right, that would be another slightly over a day of travel, putting you at the it's 28th. Yeah. What does a Cobble Dragon know anyways? Just silly. And... Arriving there, in fact, copy your tokens. Hang on. <gasps> copy it. Hang on a minute. Hang on. There we go. Copy, 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 copy. I'm so copied. Yeah, right. I think I'm copied. Copy. How do I do this again? Uh, play a visible and 